Great. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. It's October, and we're getting started with our October uh, Zoom and Facebook paper crafting night here, partnering with the Baldwin's Hill Public Library. Thank you so much to Julia for partnering with me. My name is Missy Shipman. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I've been a paper crafter for many, many years and a demonstrator for over 23. Uh, it's been a great joy to partner with the Public Library here in Baldwinsville for almost 17 years, uh, once a month having a class, an in-person class at the library. Um, throughout the pandemic, we kind of transitioned to a Zoom opportunity, a virtual class, um, and we're able to continue that option for those of you who can um, participate live with us during the real time or catching the replay uh, on Facebook or on YouTube. We are great, th thankful that you found us. Uh, tonight, we'll be making some, some fall and holiday themed projects. And those of you who picked up your kit from the library, probably sort of were curious about some of the items in here. There was an envelope filled with these um, pre-cut and pre-die cut pieces, uh, along with a whole bunch of goodness, goodness inside here. I'll pull it out so you can see. It has a whole bunch of little pieces, harvest and Halloween um, decor pieces that we'll be playing with tonight to make several different items. So you wanna keep that handy. And then there also are some uh, pieces, cardstock pieces that look something like this. There's a circle. We're going to set that aside with the Halloween pieces. But these items we're going to use to make a very special card, paper engineering project tonight, that I like to call a pop-up stand-up card. So I'll show you a few samples, and then we'll go ahead and make the, um, the one together tonight. So what's fun about this card is it folds flat and fits into a standard envelope. But when you slide it, the image um, will be self-standing. So it creates this great display for a dresser or mantle top. And, and then it can be flattened again to go into an envelope or for people to store or share. So I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I know that you enjoy paper engineering like me. And so this is a simple, um, 3D pop-up card, a fun fold that I thought you might enjoy learning, and you can use it for any occasion. Um, I used a variety of stamp sets to create uh, a variety of styles. This one says, kindness changes the world one heart at a time. You make a difference. And this is a lovely one. I think um, throughout the pandemic and uh, ongoing challenges with economy and um, just issues in our world, it's nice to remember that our small gestures make a difference. And um, I think librarians and libraries are really great at fostering that kind of sharing and uh, genuine kindness. So thank you, Julia, for being a, a kindness, a, a light in the darkness. And uh, there's a fun birthday one. This one says, happy birthday to someone who makes others happy. You're mm -hmm. the best. So these cards I colored, I stamped with, um, Memento, the black ink, and then I colored with the blends alcohol markers. So I'm going to do that a little bit with you tonight. Uh, the one that we're going to, that I'm going to create with you, uh, uses a stamp set called All Bundled Up. And this is a really fun holiday set. I love these creatures, not just for Christmas or, or holidays, but uh, although they are bundled up, so they do, they do want to be in a cold climate. Uh, but they, I think, could be fun for uh, many occasions, birthday as well as holiday. Uh, especially the greeting, your friendship warms my heart. I think that's a nice one, maybe for a Valentine's Day kind of card. So let's work first on the, the structure of the card. Now your base is this basic black cardstock, and I've already adhered some tear and tape strips for you onto your card base. So I'm going to finish doing that on my sample. And then before I fold it and we put it together, I want to show you the dimensions and you can screenshot that or you can remember, you'll be able to see this replay so you can go back and find the dimensions if you feel it's a kind of a card that you would like to recreate again. So I apologize for the shadow. Let's see if I'm not sure I can make it go entirely away. <laughs> uh, but here are the dimensions for the cardstock base. It is half a sheet of standard card stocks, four and a quarter by 11 inches. And then it is scored along these dotted lines here at one, 
two and three quarters, three and three quarters, five and a half, seven and a quarter, eight and a quarter, and 10. And then what I do, what I do is using my paper trimmer, I've cut a slit here um, between three quarter inch and three and a half inches. And that makes the slider mechanism. The layering pieces are measured here as well, two and three quarters by five and a half and two and a half by five and a quarter. So they're going to layer. Now our little pieces of the designer series paper, you have some extra pieces in your kit. You can decide which designs you would like to use. They do have front and backs. Um, I did pick colors that were bright colors that would coordinate with our Bermuda Bay paper because in your kit you found you also received a Bermuda Bay ink spot. So our projects are incorporating that color tonight. All right, so let me set those aside. And I can also post a photo of these dimensions so that if you're looking just for the directions and dimensions again, you can find them easily. This piece I've already cu uh, cut and scored for you. So we're now going to fold on those crease lines to make it nice and easy to fold, easy to, to groove. Um, I guess the slide is a good way to describe it because as I showed you on the samples, the card is designed, once, you've, once it gets comfortable with those folds, it opens and closes quite simply. Now at my house, I, I always test with my sons, um, my husband and my sons to see if they know how to open a card when I give one to them. That, um, so this one, when it's closed, they could figure it out. It's sort of, you might look at it a little bit, but you can pretty much decide that you need to slide this down to make it stand. Any Do you questions? Need do you um, fold it with the, the strip tapes inside or outside? Yes, great question. So we're going to fold all those pieces in. So the, the strip sides will be folded in and then the other folds, you can just kind of crease. You can use uh, your thumb, you can use the back of a spoon, you can use a bone folder to, um, to help make those co folds comfortable. Now, before we adhere the tape here, before we glue it together, we have to insert that, that um, slider piece. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this. And remember, as you're watching along tonight or on the replay, you don't have to complete your projects along with me. I invite you to if you'd like to do a stamp along, but you also may wish to kind of just see how I use the materials and the tips and tricks that I share and then complete it on your own time. It's entirely up to you. I always love hearing about how you incorporate products from your own stash. So you may have things um, in your home that, that coordinate with these products or that you're eager to try. Now, when you're planning the panel piece, you have to know that that bottom inch is going to be hidden by the box bottom. So we don't want our, especially if you have words, you don't want your design to be lost at the bottom. So I'm gonna make sure my friendly moose here is standing up. It's okay if a little bit of his hooves go, but I wanna have his body be up. Um, so it'll look like he's standing up on top of that little ledge. And I'll add a greeting. It says, you're the coolest. This is a fun, fun greeting. And it's nice when you have words, if you put them right at the top where they will show when the card is closed. So for example, on my Happy Halloween one, when it's closed like this, you just see the greeting. And then when it slides, you get the surprise of the images. All right, so there's my You're the Coolest. And I'm gonna use my blends tonight to color here. Now the blend alcohol markers, uh, the Stampin' Blends come in lots of different colors. They usually come in pairs, so you have a light and a dark. I'm just going to begin by giving the mousse uh, some color to the fur. And what I love about these markers is they're very fluid. The, the ink just kind of spills out off of them. And I'm gonna kind of be scribbly. I don't have to pay. It's okay with me if it goes out of the lines a little bit. Um, it doesn't have to be completely solid. If I leave a little bit of white, that's okay too but I'm laying down with one color pretty solidly. And then I'm going to go and um, highlight that with a, a little bit darker color. So I'm gonna pick one of the blends that's a little bit darker. 
And do you see how the image already has some shading here? The artist that made this stamp has parts where the fur is darker. So I'm just gonna use that as a help to me. And I'm gonna color, kind of scribble over those places where there's some darkness shading already planned for me. And I'll hold that up. You can see how that just adds a little bit of shadow um, and dimension to the moose so far. Now let's see for his antlers, we'll use a little bit different darker brown color. And they, the blends have two tips. They have a broad paintbrush tip, which I prefer usually, and then a, a finer bullet tip. And we'll go ahead and put those on. Now I forgot about his ears. So I do wanna go back and use some of those lighter browns to fill in his ears. But I want to maybe add a little bit of pink even inside. Whoop, that one came apart. Try this. A little bit of pink in there even, okay, to kind of brighten and maybe on his cheeks a little bit of pink. Now, do you see how that's quite bold right now and defined? If I go over that pink with this brown, kind of mush it in here, it's going to blur that alcohol a little bit and make it less of a, um, a bold tone. And the more you go over, the more color you're laying down. It always dries a little bit lighter. So because we're using the Bermuda Bay paper, I wanna be sure to include the Bermuda Bay as a dominant color in my design. So I'm gonna give him a Bermuda Bay hat, snow hat, and then add some of these stripes to his scarf with that color, okay? And then because I love rainbows and lots of colors, I'm going to bring in some other colors for his scarf. Maybe a yellow top there. So do you have rainbow scarves in your collection or lots of stripes in your collection? Soon it will be time to pull out our scarves. I know we don't want to talk about it yet, but I do enjoy wintertime accessories. I like to wear hats. So I'm all right with that. Just add a little more here to fill that in. So there's my you're the coolest my moose. Isn't he fun? And to, to layer it, I'll use some of my green lid glue. You can use whatever adhesive you have handy to do your layering. Um, the reason we chose to do the tear and tape for the box structure is that since it's a 3D element that will be moved quite a bit, it'll have motion to it, we want to be sure we have a really strong um, gripping adhesive. So that's why I've used the, the tear and tape. Okay, so now that we have our panel ready, we're going to slide it inside the slit, put it down in the slit. And it's going to line up along the very bottom of this part. So what I what I will do is slide it down and kind of make sure it's it's way I want it. Do you see how I've got it straight against this fold at the bottom? And it's pretty as equal as it can be for, on the left and the right. I'm not a precision stamper, so I don't worry too much about that, but I made the slit the right size for you to just slide your piece inside. Okay. So we're gonna peel off the layer, the little wax strip of the tear and tape. If it's stubborn, another tip is to use a, um, some pointed scissors or a little tweezers. You can get that paper started and pull away the wax strip. Now I know that's gonna line up. I'm gonna put it down at the bottom. And the tear and tape is not very forgiving. Really, once you've got it in place, if I wanna lift this up, I will probably tear it a little bit. So just a word of caution to not rush, take your time. Um, and this handmade with love, if it's not exactly at the bottom or if it's a little crooked, please don't, don't worry, that's okay. So then we've got this, this other side, we've gotta bring down and put it in place, okay? This is already sticky here, but I've got all this nice sticky tape here to expose. So I'll pull off the wax liner in both strips. I was gent you really even one strip would probably be gent enough, but I liked that it could be a strong bond. So there's a generous amount of tape. 
And because this is a symmetrical project, it's equidistant from the center to the right and the center to the left, I know I can just fold this down and apply and it will line up because of the, um, the measurements being equal. So now I can just apply pressure to make that bond between the tear and tape and the paper. And then it's ready to slide down and stand. Isn't that fun? So I just think it's a clever, a clever, um, a clever gift to someone. It's kind of a, it's a card that's a little bit elevated because it has that mechanism. Now we, you notice we want to decorate a little bit more here. So I'm going to put I have a couple strips of paper and I can choose if I want my pink or maybe this fun um, sort of has gingerbread and lots of Christmas. I'm going to include that one I think because that will pull together all the colors from the scarf. But remember, you can use whatever pieces of designer series paper you like. So I'll go ahead and adhere the um, this strip that's one and a half by four onto the top piece. And then this little, I like this color, it's called, it's called um, granny apple green. I'm, I always favor green as a favorite color and especially these bright ones. So I'm gonna put that in place there too. Now you also have a little circle uh, of the Bermuda Bay and a circle of the white cardstock. So I'm going to stamp inside here. Since I already put some words up here, I'm gonna put another image down on the circle. But you'll notice on the samples I shared with you, I put words also on the circle. So depending on what stamped images you have or what, what you might wanna write, that might be where you put you're the best brother or I love you or thinking of you or get well soon, whatever your message is, you can hand write as well. Or if you have a stamped image, you can put it into that circle. So I'm gonna use the little birdie from that stamp set with all those happy woodland creatures ready for winter time snuggling. And I can add a little bit of color. Let's make him a bluebird, a light bluebird. Like you could use the ink spot that you included in there. To yeah. to ink it, you mean? To so yeah, when you when you do the stamp, you could use the ink spot for that. Yes. And we'll be using the ink spot for um the other projects that I have too, but definitely you could incorporate it. Um, either one idea with the ink spot is you can take it and kind of give a, um, uh, I don't know what we used to call this flicking because it makes a flicking sound. What I'm doing is just adding a very little bit of ink to the edges of the paper, and that's going to kind of frame it. And you can see that just added a little definition to the edge of the white. Okay, that's one way to use it. And we're gonna use it to color some images in a little while too. So let's give a, a nice cheerful red scarf to our little bird friend. And boots, let's see, how about some yellow boots? Okay, so there's our little friend and we can adhere this to the front of the card and that, when that means when it's closed, it has a little bit of interest going on right here. I'm going to put it on this side because see how the bird is looking out to the um, to the right. I I can put him over here, but then he's sort of shouting off the edge of the page. I want him to be singing into the card, if that makes sense. So I'm going to place him on this side, and I only want to put adhesive at the bottom of this circle because it's going to when it folds. Um, it's going to be standing up. So I only want adhesive at that bottom half. Okay. There. So here's a fun card. I hope you'll enjoy playing around with this mechanism. And uh, it's, it's not difficult to prepare. What I find is if I'm making a card like this, I like to make several. So I'll pull out my supplies and I'll do all the math at once. I'll use my, my cutting tool and my, um, my uh, scoring tool to, um, to get all of them done in, in, at once. And then I have several um, parts, pieces and parts ready to work on the card. So we'll set this one aside. Welcome new people joining into it with us tonight. We're glad you're here live with us. You're welcome to put comments in the chat. 
Uh, and I know Julie is monitoring that. So if you have questions or comments, feel free to go off mute and to unmute yourself and talk with me, um, or you can put your comments into the chat. So the next set of supplies we need are to create some of these Halloween and harvest uh, projects. And I'm going to show you these. These may look familiar to you. We made something similar last year using these supplies. And I wanted to show you, this is, um, this is called a Christmas cracker. And uh, when I, I first learned about them when I lived in England during college. And what you do is uh, you usually do this with a, a friend, not just by yourself, but to demonstrate, I'm gonna pull it apart. See if I can do it on camera here. It should make a big sound if I can get it to us. There we go. So it has a cracker, makes the sound of the firecracker. And then there's usually some kind of little toy inside. Like this one has a little kaleidoscope. And, but my favorite part inside the cracker is the hat. So let me pull this out. Looks like I got a nice red, cheerful red one. The crown. A crown, yes. yes. So, and you also get a riddle. So here's my crown and I'll put it on. So that's so um, traditional English. It's amazing. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so I don't have these for you to put in your own crackers tonight, but I encourage you to use your imagination. Uh, certainly candy fits nicely inside. Um, you can make paper crowns to put inside or little riddles. And um, also like a lip, lip balm, chapstick, or um, small little toiletries fit inside. Uh, if you don't want to do a candy treat, but candies, of course, are always lots of fun. Here's my riddle. What do you get if you cross a cow, a sheep, and a goat? The answer is a milky ba kid. And I don't know what, I, that doesn't make sense to me. I have to puzzle that one out, Julia. It says, what do you get if you cross a cow, a sheep, and a goat? A milky ba kid. Is that kind of like a milky bar? A milky ba kid. Milky I'll have to, kid. Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Well, that one was kind of a bust. Sometimes they're funny, um, but here's my crown. I'll put on my crown. And um, I, but I wanted to share with you, that's a little bit of the, the, um, the traditional uh, British holiday Christmas. Here's, here I am with my crown, hi everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. So, um, so we're gonna be working on these tonight and you have supplies to make two crackers as well as some other supplies. So, okay, I'll remove my crown. We can go back just to my hands because I know it's easier to see when it's just the one screen. Um, in, your, in your kit of supplies, there are two of these crackers that are already die cut and ready and scored for you. So what you'll wanna do is pop out these little diamonds and you can save them. I'll show you one way that I use them for a project. Uh, they're kind of fun. And the the the, uh, the dies are double sided, so you can make two of the pumpkin pie orange stripes, or two of the Cajun Crage gingham, or one of each. You get to decide how to how to do that. I'll uh, we'll pop those out. And here's a way that I use some of those elements just to create half a flower here on the back of my envelope. Just those little um, negative pieces that, that pop out, you can play around with patterns. And let's see. So I'll set these aside because there are so many possibilities with how you'll want to combine the elements. I'm just going to show you a few ways that I use the supplies to make these projects. And this is, I call these projects collage projects because you really, um, get to layer and, and uh, build your design however you would like. There isn't a right or wrong to it. And I'm using um, some dimensionals along with my uh, green glue tonight to adhere things, okay? So you can see that's how I get some dimension on my card here, the pumpkin and the flowers pop off the page because they're using these dimensionals for adhesive. Now the ink spot, if you, if you haven't opened yours yet, um, be, do be careful. Sometimes with your fingernail, you can cut that, um, break the seal of the paper. Sometimes I use a paper snip and just carefully, uh, like a razor blade, very carefully draw a line to cut it. Um, just do be careful because I don't want any injuries, but you'll want to open up the, the um, lid. Some people leave so that one piece is still connected. I prefer to take the lid completely off, and that allows me to get a little more in and out um, as I do my inking. 
So I use the ink tonight to stamp a greeting on one of the crackers. And also I used it to color some white images that some white pieces that came in the kit. So you, you'll notice in your pile of treasures, there are some things that are white on both sides. They're all white on one side. So you could actually take any of the images and color them Bermuda Bay if you wished. Uh, an advantage to doing this is that if you're going to use the Bermuda Bay ink for a greeting or for any stamping, it's nice to pull together that color with other images. So even though in this kit, I didn't have any Bermuda Bay cardstock, I was able to change the white pieces and make them uh, Bermuda Bay. All right, so let's go ahead and um, pull out these treasures, kind of sort them out. Welcome back to our group tonight. If you have any questions, please add them to the chat or uh, say hello. You can go off mute. I'd love to hear how you folks celebrate um, harvest holidays. If you have uh, trick-or-treaters and you cater to them in your home, or if you um, are preparing favors for a holiday meal or a Thanksgiving meal. This one I made uh, for my mom. Her name is Bonnie. So at our Thanksgiving table, we'll have these. I like to have usually have some kind of favor that's also like a name card um, at our table. We don't usually have a huge crowd, but it's just fun having something with your name on it, right? People of all ages like personalized gifts. So which should we begin with? Shall we make the card first? And that way I can show you how to do the Bermuda Bay. Let's do that. So in your packet, there's the two, a lot of little pieces, the two pieces for the crackers, and then a white card that's scored and ready for you to fold. So we'll begin by doing this. And you remember that you can, if you want your, card to be a spooky card, then you can use your cat on there your or your witch's hat. You get to decide. I used my witch's hat to make this tag. Uh, there's a little bit of ribbon in your kit. It's that Bermuda Bay color. And so I stamped and used the witch's hat to make a little Halloween packet. And you as the designer tonight can mix and match your supplies, but I'll go ahead and make some similar to what my samples were. So I'm gonna begin by layering uh, something kind of a focal piece at the bottom that then I can build up on. So I pick one of the, uh, these remind me of um, Mexican decorations, like for Cinco de Mayo, there are a lot of these pretty lacy cutouts. And uh, that's what it makes me think of. I'm gonna lay that down first. And then I'm gonna build up. So if you would like to do like I did and incorporate the Bermuda Bay color, you can find the little flowers that are white on both sides. Okay, or you can go ahead and um, do any, use any of the flowers because they're all white on at least one side of them. And that may be, maybe there aren't more just white ones in your kit. I'm trying to remember how I sorted everything out. But I have one large one that's ready to color. And then I can take, maybe pick another one. I'll turn this one, the black one. I'm gonna turn that over so that I can decorate and make it white on the back. So to do that, you might get some inky fingers, but I like to say it's not a good day unless there's ink on your fingers. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I, sorry about the shadow friends. It's actually from my overhead light, not just my um, standing light. So I'm not sure how I can eliminate that now but I'll move this over here so you can see it's just a white piece and I'm gonna tap on it with the Bermuda Bay ink and I'm gonna kind of wipe it. If you don't want your fingers to get messy, you can use um, tweezers or a toothpick, you can use the edge of my scissors and just kind of hold that away. And I'm gonna set that aside to dry a little bit. I have another one that's black. I'm gonna flip it over because I don't, Personally, I don't need the black flower for my design and I'm gonna color it with the Bermuda Bay. What's nice is you can get some texture. It doesn't have to be solidly colored. It actually is going to have a little bit of texture to it. I'm gonna take one of the smaller flowers as well. This one is Cajun Craze. I'm gonna flip it over so it's white and color it with the Bermuda Bay. 
Now, if you have different art tools in your home, like a paintbrush or even a Q-tip, you can use that tool to get the ink from the ink pad and apply it to paper too. And I'll be showing you more tips and tricks with inks over the next couple of week, couple of months. Um, so hang tight to your Bermuda Bay spot and maybe um, if you grow your ink collection with other colors too, or whatever color you receive in your consumable kit, uh, non-consumable kit that you're borrowing from the library. So here I have, I'll have this side by side. So you can see this is kind of where I'm heading, where my greeting can be in this Bermuda Bay color. And I'm tying the project together by having my flowers with that color as well. Okay. So I'll take my little, my larger pumpkin piece, this pumpkin patch. We don't have pumpkins at our house yet. Are you folks that do usually have pumpkins on your front porch? I usually do, but I haven't gotten them yet. Yeah, we're, we feel a little maybe behind who the times here a little bit, um, but we, we, kind of, we have understated decor at our home. <laughs> we, we like to have a pretty wreath on our door. And then we do usually have some pumpkins though. Billy will usually indulge me and we'll go pick some pumpkins. Um, I think this is gonna be the weekend when we need to make that happen. They have some nice ones at the Ace Hardware that are just, you don't have to carve them or anything. They're just decorative just, enough to just put them in front. Nice, very nice. Yeah, we the boys never really enjoyed carving them. We did it a few times just to say we did it, but we used to actually put these little um, Mr. Potato Head pieces on them. They were like little plastic pieces that you'd stick into the pumpkins. <laughs> that was our, our way of, of uh, decorating them. So I'm putting these little flowers just, I like threes again, just like if I were doing little gems. I've and I notice, I notice you're curling up the petals a little bit too to yeah. make more three-dimensional. I like that. Yeah, it does help give a little bit of, of um, texture to them and uh, dimension. And it's just with my fingers, just kind of pulling up the edges. And then in your little mix of things, there should be some sequins. Let's see. Sometimes my kits end up a little different from your kits. So I'm going to grab some of my extra sequins, but hopefully you have some little gold ones in your kit. I got Because do you have some of, there's just a, yes, good. A little strip of like five or six little golden gems. They're sequins that already have adhesive on them, which is nice, right? Oh. The, uh, the sticker is already there. So you, when you pick it off, it's going to have a little glue dot stuck to it there if you get it off easily. And then I like to put that in the center of my flowers as a little gem. Nice. Some sparkle. Okay. So they, if you take it off carefully, they've got the little gummy glue right connected for you. And we'll use a few of them on this card. All right. So that's sweet just like that. But um, you'll notice on my sample, I found a few more of the leaves. I found, um, or, or you can use the flowers. There's some um, that are... Uh, different color flowers as well. But I'm going to put these two leaves and then I've got this green uh, swirl. It's like the, the, the vine from the pumpkin patch. So we're going to tuck that in there too. And now I only need a little bit of glue. So I'm going to just dab dot, dot, dot a little bit on this swirl. Dot, dot, not a lot. Dot, dot, not a lot. You got it, Julia. I'm learning. And kind of to kind of tuck it in so it's just sort of hanging out for some some texture it's okay with me if um if it's loose here you just would have to be mindful if you're putting it in an envelope to to do that carefully uh, so that it doesn't bend or or tear we have some leaves and these fun fall colors the cajun craze and we have the old olive let's see if i can find another leaf here's a different shape one we'll use this one I noticed the leaves have some cuts in them. Is there yes. a way to make those stand out if you bend it or? That's a great question. I think if you bend it, it helps to give the dimension again. I'm trying to think if you'd want to ink it, if we tried to, um, I'm afraid the blue would overwhelm the color. Yeah. I was wondering if we could, like if it was tone on tone, you could almost do a green marker over those lines. Ah. Uh, but actually if you fold it, it does, it does give, 
more more definition to those little score lines. So we'll dot dot not a lot on that as well. Kind of tuck it in. Now remember, yours can look any way you like. It's just a collage project, so it's going to have some variety to it. And you could make this any kind of greeting that you wanted. I chose the you make a difference because it's not meant to be really a Halloween card. It's more a grateful card or a Thanksgiving um, theme gratitude card. And so I chose that greeting, uh, you make a difference. And that stamp is from the set, Begin With a Dream. Again, it has that beautiful kindness changes the world one heart at a time, which is so nice. So let's put, I'll use that one again with my Bermuda Bay. So you'll notice when I'm inking with a spot, you might be used to working with a larger ink pad. When you work with a spot like this, you kind of have to walk your stamp across the ink pad to get all, it's too, the stamp is too wide, right? To ink it up once. So you just sort of tap it along side to side, or you might prefer to ink your stamps, put your ink, put your stamp on the table and then add your ink upside down like this. It just becomes a preference over time. And I honestly don't know that I do one more than the other. Uh, I'll have to kind of study it to see what I naturally choose to do. So there we have a little card. And on my envelope, I simply added a pumpkin to the corner. Something you might want to do if you want to pull in that Bermuda Bay color again is we can do the flicking around the edge here. And depending on how much you um, put your ink into the surface, you're going to get that varied uh, sort of distressed or vintage look, uh, more or less depending on how much you uh, put the ink over, extend it over the project. Hope that makes sense. But that's just kind of a fun way to add a little bit of that color to the envelope. Okay, so it looks, it almost looks like vintage or distressed when we do that. And then I added some of those flower pieces on the back. You could make a full flower too. There's so many of these when you punch them out, you can, you can experiment and make lots of different geometric patterns. Uh, they, can, they can be sort of an argyle pattern if you like, and you can vary the colors, it, depending on how patient you are with, um, with piecing them. If you're a quilter, you, you probably like this kind of thing where you're piecing the papers together. Something like that. You can experiment, okay? So that's one project made with all those goodies. Next, let's make the little tag. And this one, you'll see I used uh, some of our ink uh, to the Bermuda Bay to tie in the color of the ribbon with this beautiful crushed curry. I think that's a, a really nice color combination. And then I also colored uh, some of these, uh, one of the little swirls, this black one or any color that you want to use on the other side is white. So with that same way we colored the flowers, I'm gonna carefully color the swirls. And it's nice and inky, which is fun. People of all ages like to make Art, arty messes. So there we are. So we've got this little swirl. And that's again just going to pull in the colors with the ink and, and some elements here. So for this one, I'll start first by stamping uh, some stars uh, directly onto the circle. These little stars are from a, a paper pumpkin stamp set. The current month of paper pumpkin is a Halloween themed kit. And every month with Paper Pumpkin, you receive a little stamp set. And so it has, um, usually has greetings as well as uh, images. And this is a set of the photopolymer stamps. So they're really great because as you know, we like to be able to see through and line up where we're working. So for example, on this little label piece, I can add uh, the words, enjoy this spooky treat. And because it's photopolymer and I can see through, I can get that to line up inside this, this label pretty carefully like that. 
So with this label, again, you could put someone's write some handwrite someone's name if you're creating a present for them. Uh, you could use a greeting stamp that you have. You could draw a little picture in there. You could cut a word or an image from a magazine and layer it onto this frame. Any any way you'd like to build this collage uh, tag. So we'll glue that. And on this one, I liked using the witch's hat. I thought this was fun. And it's spooky, but yet it's not scary, right? <laughs> I like spooky a little bit more than, I, a lot more than scary. Halloween, um, I enjoy the, the costumes when children come to our house. We always really enjoy, my husband and I enjoy sitting out on the porch and uh, giving out the treats and uh, welcoming the kids and, and enjoying their costumes. And so this year, we'll see uh, who our favorite is. We usually like ones that are um, have a homemade element to them. Um, my mom always helped me um, have homemade costumes too, and they're, that's a lot of fun. Do any of you have a favorite memory of dressing up when you were younger? One of my favorites, my brother had, we had this big, uh, springy tunnel that you could claw, crawl through uh-huh he put the tunnel over himself and slouched it over the front and then he made on paper he drew some big eyes with bloodshot eyes and and little uh -huh. and uh, pinned them to the front of the fabric uh snake-like thing right so tunnel this gigantic tube and oh. big eyes on it and then he took a red dish towel and could stick that out with his arm oh so for the tongue. tongue oh fantastic so he, we didn't know what kind of monster he was but he was some kind of giant um yes uh, <laughs> yeah uh inchworm or something oh that's marvelous yeah what fun memories so when they would give him the candy he would stick out the tongue and take the candy into the mouth <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good fun. Yeah, my friends uh, growing up, my two best friends in high school, we were one year we were the knife, fork and spoon. And we mm -hmm. made costumes out of fabric and big chicken wire heads that for the knife, fork and spoon utensils. And then the next year we recycled the, uh, the costumes into the three musketeers like the candy bar. So we painted them to look like the candy bars. Very funny. I'm going to run and get my picture to show you while you're looking at this tag. I'll be right back. <laughs> now I want spooky treats. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a picture of my friends with the fork, knife, and spoon. This oh. is in the cafeteria. Isn't this so funny? That is. So knife, fork, and spoon. We're holding the knife, fork, and spoon here. This is my friend Colleen and Melanie. And, and we were always called the Three Musketeers. And so the year after we had made these, we turned them into the Three Musketeer costumes. Oh, yes. So we yes. painted them to look like the candy bars. Isn't that funny? That's nice. <laughs> yeah. And we, um, we were in band. We weren't in the color guard, but we were friends with the people in the color guard. So we got to borrow their boots and their hats from the color guard friends when we were oh, in that's band. that's right. The yeah. hats would be perfect. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so those are my favorite um, memories of my own. And then of the boys. Um, so here's what I made boys. with my. Uh... Oh, that looks lovely. I like it with the swirly, the vines, you know, coming out. That's beautiful. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. So with your spooky treat tag, you can use, a, uh, you know, the large bag that your goodies came in. You could put a lot of treats in there for someone special. The bag that you have your um, kit in today, or you can use a smaller cellophane bag or repurpose a sandwich bag or something um, and then tie uh, the little tag to the top for a special treat, special spooky treat. Mm. So now we'll finish up. I'll demonstrate how to put together one of the of the crackers here, the Christmas crackers, or I don't know what other things they might treat treat packaging. So again, you get to decide if you want to use the the orange and, and stripey um, pumpkin pie stripe colors, 
or the Cajun craze gingham. And I think they both work really well for, for either Halloween or a harvest kind of gift. And so you'll pop out those diamonds. You don't have a need for treats like this. You, you can use this as paper for a card base, of course. You know, you could cut it and add it. It would be like a little fence on a trim on a card per, by possible, something like that. And then your flowers could grow out of it. You can do all kinds of things. But I hope you'll consider making some treats to brighten the days of some on a neighbor, maybe, or a friend down the street or at your workplace that would just enjoy a little surprise. And doesn't have to be anything fancy inside you. Like I said, you can put a note inside, uh, a little riddle um, or, or some candy, uh, something, a little treat to, to give joy to other people. Now, remember when we were making our, our pop-up card tonight, I was singing the praises of things when they're symmetrical and equivalent, right? So it was very easy to do the gluing because we could make it nice and flat. This is not um, symmetrical. There are six pieces, but one is going to overlap the other. So we can't, we can't push it down and make it flat, if that makes sense. There's, it, won't, um, it won't fold over flat here. They wouldn't overlap if I had it flat. So it's a little bit trickier to adhere. If you have adhesive like the tear and tape, that would work very well. Or if you want to use something like the liquid glue, I'll just give you a few tips. What you'll want to do is put your adhesive along the, the rectangle part. See how they have these little triangle pieces in the middle? You don't want to put the glue there because that is where you'll tie your piece together. So you just want to have the glue on these rectangles. We'll put a little bit of glue in this one and then the ones at the end, okay? Now, one of the nicest things about green glue, green lit glue, is it does give you a little wiggle room. So you can push it together. If it's not quite straight, you can kind of wiggle it a little bit till it's in the right position. But you want to anchor these. I like to just put a finger inside and a thumb on the outside and just squeeze there you have to kind of reach down inside to the, to the other part. It's a little bit awkward. We can't make it go well, we can make it flat a little bit, but you don't want to crease this piece too much. I guess you can push down more than I realized without it, um, without it bending. See, we don't want this to go flat, but we can push like that. All right, so once you have that secure, and with green glue, you do have to let, give it a little bit of time to dry. Then you'll want to tie one end, tie one end off, fill it up, and tie the other end. So if you if you like numbers, if you like math dimensions, um, I used uh, 18 inches of the, the white thread that's in your kit, the baker's twine. And, and so, because I wanted it to be two pieces that are nine inches. So nine plus nine is 18. I'll use my little ruler piece here. And then that is gonna be in half. You, you really obviously just need one piece, but I liked that by using two pieces at each end, it gives it a little bit fuller um, decor decoration at the end. So I have two pieces that are nine inches and I simply tie and when I'm pulling my knot here, I'm just gently pulling it so that those triangle pieces fold in. Isn't that clever? So now it's got the, the oh, closed yeah. up. Looks like a star inside. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. So you just gently tie the, with the knot and then the nine inches should be long enough, I hope, for you to make a little bow. You've got plenty of thread so you can make longer pieces if you like, but I found that two pieces each nine inches worked, worked well. And then, of course, two more pieces we'll, we'll use on this. But you want to put something inside before you do your second closure. Now for the decoration pieces, again, I considered it like a collage project. I just looked at what pieces I had and what all the, all the colors coordinate. So you can't really mess it up, right? They're all gonna go together and you'll have things left over. Um, but these pieces are fun to kind of create a base to build on. And there's several of those. You do also have two more labels. One is this kind of peach color and one is white on both sides. So those will be, 
um, if you want to have it be a name place for plain uh, place card holder for Thanksgiving dinner or uh, however you'd like to use them. Um, the cat is fun too, the little spooky black cat, some leaves. And so you'll just build up on this. And if you like the little sequins are always fun. This one, I, I need to put some sequins on there too because I like the sparkle. But uh, anywhere there's the flowers is a good place to put the sequin as a center because they have the tiny little hole there like this. And so it's fun to, to put a center on the little flowers. Does anybody have any questions? Do you think the cat is too small to put a sequin as the eye or? Let's see what it looks like. Let me pull one out here. I think that might work. I mean, it's a little, a little large proportion, but um, there aren't really any rules, right? You get to decide. That's true. Yeah, I think that works. And it does add a little bit of sparkle to him. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. yeah, I think it's okay. And he's got his little whiskers there. Um, yeah, I'd probably put it a little forward towards the... More, yeah, let me move it. It looks a little too far, doesn't it? Yeah. Can have it almost to the edge. Is that a little better? To get it, yeah. to see. Yeah. <laughs> or you can sprinkle them over anywhere you like, the little sequins. Um, you could always put a little flower or leaf with the cat too. Um, it makes it a little less spooky and a little more just um, harvesty. You could decorate them with a little flower or put some more leaves here. So you can't go wrong. You can use the supplies any way you like, uh, or you may wanna add other things from your stash to this and make it not Halloween related at all, but a happy birthday one because how fun this, this stripey paper is for any, any happy occasion. Great, so let's line up the things that we worked on. Put them here and find my card again. And then these, this, um, you're the coolest. I hope you'll enjoy, if you, like I said, I'll have, make sure to post the photo in the comments of the, um, the dimensions as well as they're here in this video. It's a, it's a simple project, but it does kind of give a wow in my opinion, because it's sort of a surprise when someone opens it um, receives this in the mail or in the envelope, and then they can have it stand up tall. Now, I've seen some fun variations where people put more paper, more designer series paper around it. You could also add a panel to the back where you could write a message. Oh. And so there's you know, a lot of possibilities to kind of upgrade it even more. Um, the only thing you want to be cautious of is to not have things here that are too bumpy or thick because the whole objective is for it to slide. And so if you had sequins or ribbons or uh, popped out dimensional pieces, then it won't, it won't move. So, so save the, the um, embellishment part for maybe this front piece or uh, along the, the, the uh, designer series paper. Nice. Great. Well, thank you all so much for being a part of things with me tonight for October for our fun um, craft night together. I look forward to seeing some of you, I hope, at our library in-person event tomorrow. I have some Christmas kits ready to craft, holiday kits. As well. And if you're not quite ready for Christmas yet, I have some harvest things. So um, we have a good time together. It's called Let's Kit Together. Uh, your $20 fee includes a full kit of supplies that you get to play with and then take home. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me uh, through Messenger or leave a comment um, and, and I can... Uh, feed through our, our, um, our comments in the Facebook group. Uh, so that will be posted in Facebook as well as in YouTube. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And thank you, Julia, for a fun night together. And uh, for those of you who are with us in person, I appreciate your support and uh, your encouragement. So if you have any requests for paper engineering fun folds, send them my way. It's a great uh, challenge for me to seek the directions or create the dimensions um, for an idea that you may see that you would like uh, to recreate. Yep, we had about four or five people following along on Facebook as well. Very good. Oh, I'm so delighted. Well, I hope everyone has a wonderful evening, a great weekend ahead, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you, Julia.